We all know that the Chargers underachieved in 2021, but did Brandon Staley get too much of a pass considering the Chargers had one of the worst defenses in the league? You are Locked On Chargers, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Chargers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up and welcome into the Locked On Chargers podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Wade, joined as always by my co-host, David Drogemeyer. And we've been covering the Chargers together for over six seasons now. We're heading into our fifth season as the host of the Locked On Chargers podcast, bringing you your team every day. Thank you guys so much for making us your first listen today. And to make sure you never miss the show, go subscribe to the Locked On Chargers YouTube channel and also follow the show for free on all platforms wherever you get your podcast from. But it's Friday and that means it's Fan Mail Friday. On today's show, we're going to talk about first Brandon Staley and whether or not he should have taken a little bit more flack for the Chargers' struggles on defense last year. And if we could see them blitz a little bit less this year, considering all the better defensive upgrades the Chargers have made. We'll also talk about how high the Chargers rank as far as the best rosters in the NFL and much more. But David, I think it is a fair question that we got in here today from Twitter, and it's from flipping out on Twitter. Asks, so super critical question, but are we being too easy on Staley? Defensive coach with bottom of the rankings defensive results last year. Coach has to coach the players they have. What plays last year or adjustments made you say, yeah, this is the guy. So, David, I mean, I think that's a tricky question because I think we all know that, yeah, you do coach with the guys that you have, but obviously the Chargers were a little bit deprived of talent in a lot of places and obviously were banged up and what Brandon Staley pointed out to a lot of their struggles. But do you think that he is maybe getting too much of a free pass on that one? I think a lot of Charger fans, I mean, us included, uh, was blown away by the resume. Right. Brandon Staley had the number one overall defense with the Rams. And so I think there was a part of us that expected the Chargers defense to be pretty good last year just because of what he was able to do. But I think we were forgetting like, hey, they had Aaron Donald. (laughs) They had Von Miller. Not excuse me, not Von Miller, but they had some fantastic football players. You know, they had one of the best corners in in the league uh, in Jalen Ramsey, a guy you can move all over the the you know, all over the football field, similar to Derwin James, but he just didn't have all of the pieces in place to be able to run the type of defense that he wanted to run. And I think an example of that, Daniel, is on third and longs, whenever the Chargers got their opponents in the third and long situations, they use those exotic blitz packages and they seem to work quite a bit. But the problem was they were not in those situations nearly enough to be able to show what kind of defensive mastermind that Brandon Staley could possibly put in. And hey, this was the first year of a new defense for him last year. The players were learning it. He was trying to teach it. The organization thought they were going to be able to learn that defense a little bit quicker than they did. So yeah, I think you have to put it in perspective with the personnel that he had and what he was able to get done. It wasn't good enough, but I think this year you're going to see a much different defense. Yeah, I mean, I think if you're talking about like specific examples, like there's an example I remember from Monday Night Football, the first time the Chargers and the Raiders matched up when they took their undefeated record away from them, only to get sweet revenge later on. We don't talk about that part, but there was a play on third down where they bracket covered Hunter Renfro, right? And they had him at third and I think probably six or seven. And Derek Carr just, his brain broke. Like, he couldn't go to Hunter Renfro. That's the, he, you know, that was the first read he had. And then he basically yeah. just crumpled up and, and went down. And that was like, okay, hey, I see it. I see it with Brandon Staley. Did we get enough of those moments in 2021? No, we didn't. But it's just one of those situations where, where when you do have such a bad run defense like the Chargers had, you are seeing a lot of third and shorts where it's much more unpredictable what this yeah. offense is going to do. In the obvious passing down situations for most of the season, the Chargers were really, really good in those situations. They just had too few and too far between. And I think the one thing you did see with Staley, though, is you saw how it was supposed to work. And a lot of the times it came down to one dude just losing that one-on-one matchup that he had, right? And I think that's the one thing where it's like, okay, well, I could see how that would work if you had the better players, if you had players that were more equipped to it, right? Not Chris Harris Jr. chasing some guy across the field or Michael Davis not getting his head around when he's in good coverage, right? So, like, you did see some of those things. I mean, yeah, if you're supposed to be a defensive mastermind, obviously it's hard to apologize, you know, or be an apologist for someone who had one of the worst defenses in the entire league last year. 
But we do know that guys like Trey Marshall were playing, right? And the guys that should have never stepped on the field had to play. On the inside, you had guys like Justin Jones and Linval Joseph missing a bunch of time. Chris Harris Jr. was missing time. All the important players, Asante Samuel Jr. corner was missing a lot of time. And we know that the secondary is very important to what Brandon Staley wants to do. But I do think a better run defense is going to help some of those more complex parts of what Brandon Staley wants to do defensively come out a little bit more. But let's also not forget that it's being a head coach as well, David. And what he did yeah. on fourth down, being the most efficient team in the NFL on fourth down offensively, obviously. But he's making the, you know, he's pushing the red button to go for it on fourth down. And also his influences on the draft and free agency and how much better we think that's been since Brian Staley took over. All of those need to be included into the conversation, too, because we are talking about the head coach of the Chargers. Nobody's blaming Ronaldo Hill for this. Right, exactly. He's the CEO. He's the guy making all of the of the decisions, not just the ones on the defensive side. And I think we have to put that in perspective and appreciate all the things that he's done, because, hey, before he got here, the Chargers neglected the offensive line and as soon as he got here, that changed, and it changed quickly. They signed guys. They drafted guys, very, very important guys, impact guys that completely transformed that unit. And then this year, they revamped and completely transformed the defense and also continued to pour resources into the offensive line. They've really invested in the spine of their team, and it's going to pay dividends, no question about it. Brandon Staley didn't have the type of defense that he wanted last year, but I think, like I said before, this year, I think he has a lot more of the pieces that he needs, and the defense is going to have a lot more confidence because they've been in this system, and there's guys at every level that's been in this system that's going to be able to teach those guys so they can go out there and play the best type of football that they are capable of. And I think it also comes down to, okay, but now there's no excuses, right? Absolutely. I mean, we'll see how this year plays out, obviously. But at the same time, like, he has all the pieces that he needs now. So if it doesn't come out this year, if you're still seeing the struggles, I mean, the de blame definitely is going to fall on him as the defensive yes. play caller. But you have to see it first. It's only been one season, so I'm not going to overreact to that, especially when I see all the benefits that I, I believe he's bringing to the table as far as the relationships that he's made and getting some of these lighter free agents the culture right, to change. come in yeah. because of the relationships that Brandon Staley was able to cultivate with those dudes and how meaningful it was. But we do have another question I think goes along nicely with this from Douglas Scott, who asked, with Bosa and Mac rushing, do you see Staley and Hill blitzing much with D DJ Derwin James or whatever linebackers on the field? All right, David, so... The Chargers puts more than Gus Bradley last year, but do you think that this is something that you'll see go down a little bit because he has better players on the defensive line and not have to bring that extra defender? Yeah, I don't. I don't think so. Actually, I, I think you, you're gonna. I think you're gonna see some more blitz because they're gonna be in better positions to be able to bring the blitz this year. I think you're gonna be in more of those third and long opportunities where you can send extra guys and you can confuse guys and you can make things a lot more difficult. They weren't in enough of those situations because they couldn't stop the run. Now they have guys that on paper at least, should be able to come in and stop the run on early down so you can put yourself in those positions to be able to blitz more. Yeah, and I think it has a lot to do with trusting the dudes on the back end a lot more, right? Because if you're sending someone, that's a vacancy. That's an open space right. that somebody else has to go fill and one less person to make a tackle if there is a pass to be completed, right? So if you are going to blitz, you better trust the guys in the back end that they're going to be able to fill that role, be able to make that tackle for the guy because that's the one thing you do as a quarterback. You're going towards the blitz, right? So you blitz somebody, a slot comes, right? You know that's where there's an open space now that somebody has to go cover. And... When he was with the Rams, he actually blitzed more with the number one defense in the NFL. Last year, Staley blitzed 25.1% of times on dropbacks. In 2020, the Rams blitzed 27.3% of the time. So not a huge difference there, but quite a, you know, that's quite a few more blitzes they ran in 2020 with a much better defense than what the Chargers had last year. And Staley was still blitzing him, you know, a quarter of the time. And let's not forget, I mean, with Gus Bradley last in 2020, it was like 16%. So it is already yeah. more... And I do think that you'll be able to see him get a little bit more creative with a little bit more trust on the back end from some of these guys. But we do have more great questions from Fan Mail Friday to get into because we had a bunch of you guys come out and really show up to help contribute and kind of put your spin on today's show. So we're going to get into which which rosters could rival the Chargers roster because we know it's one of the better rosters in the league. And also... Maybe if we could see a Justin Jackson reunion at running back. And if it was fourth and 10, who were the players that we want on the field defensively? So we're going to get into that because that is going to be a really, really tough one to figure out because, I mean, there's a lot of different combinations of things that you could do. But I think we've all also been in a lot of tough situations 
where you could use a little bit of extra cash. And that's where the Dave app comes in. Level with me, guys. We've all been in that situation at some point. Maybe you can only afford to put a few gallons of gas in your tank. Or you got another yet save the date and you're wondering how you're going to get a gift for the wedding. That's why you guys need the Dave app. I know, especially with my wedding coming up, I've been in a couple of tough money pinches for sure. But Dave is the banking app that can help you get up to $500 instantly with extra cash. That's more money to fill your tank. Buy a wedding gift for me if you want to or catch up on bills. You can finally tackle all those expenses that have been stressing you out without any hangups. There's no interest and no credit check needed. Millions of people have already downloaded the Dave app to get the financial relief that they need with extra cash. If you're in a pinch and you need some extra help, download Dave and think of it as a helping hand from future you. Download the Dave app from the App Store right now. That's D-A-B-E. Sign up for the extra cash account and get up to $500 instantly. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Instant transfer fees apply. Banking provided by Evolve. Member FDIC. All right, David, let's continue to crush some of these Fan Mail Friday questions. And thank you guys again. You can always ask your questions to us anywhere in the YouTube comments, right? You can hit us up at LockdownLAC and David Drogemeyer's Drotalk SD Twitter account. The DMs are always open there. But let's get to Tom Telesco's burner, who's always asking questions. We very much appreciate it. And he has a good one for us today. Which rosters do you think can rival the Chargers? I think the Chargers, Bills, Bucks, Ravens, Rams, and Bengals are the best on paper to make it to the Super Bowl this year. Also, I see we have $14 million left in cap space. You think we sign a right tackle and more depth and or some more depth at the inside linebacker position. So let's focus on the roster part of it here. I mean, I think you have most of them there, Tom, uh, as far as the rosters that really rival what the Chargers have. I mean, I think you could throw the Packers in there. Really good defense, a good offensive line. They have Aaron Rodgers, multiple time MVP, right? Reigning MVP. And they lost Devontae Adams, obviously, but they're still going to be a very good team. The 49ers have a really good roster. We'll see what happens with Trey Lance. The Cowboys, I hate to say, have a really good roster as well. But I think no matter where you look, David, I mean, you're going to see that the Chargers are up there as far as rosters goes. They have one of the best, most complete rosters in the league. I know you shared something the other day about the Chargers being ranked as the second best roster in the NFL. And it doesn't really matter. But yes, on paper, yeah, I think those are kind of the right teams that are all in that kind of contending category. Yeah, I mean, I think if you look at the teams across the NFL and you look at recent success and you just look at what they've been able to assemble, I think you look at the Buffalo Bills as a team that's pretty obvious as having one of the best rosters in the league. Josh Allen, a guy who can throw rockets down the football field, who's very tough, who can run, who's very, very mobile. Stefan Diggs, one of the best receivers in the league. O.J. Howard on defense got guys like Jordan Poyer and Von Miller and Shaq Lawson. I mean, they have playmakers up and down their roster. They have a good special teams unit. They're very well coached. They're a rugged football team. I think the Bills are one of the, definitely one of the best rosters in the Yeah, NFL. probably the best. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that. I mean, I think the Ravens is like, okay, because like, the thing is about the Chargers is like, we know their holes, right? Because yeah. of linebacker and because of offensive tackle, that's why it's hard to just unequivocally say, hey, they have the best roster. But like the Ravens, right? Their wide receiver room is a little sketchy, right? And they traded yeah. Hollywood Brown away. With the Buccaneers, like, they lost a lot of pieces on their offensive line. That core that they have is getting older. They still have some good players, right? And then even teams like the Rams, right? You lose to someone like Vaughn Miller. And yeah, you like Leonard Floyd, but they didn't really get a full-time replacement. You're replacing Robert Woods with Allen Robinson. You still don't have Odell Beckham Jr. back. So like all of these teams have holes, but it's hard to say that the Chargers with their own holes are just easily above any of those teams. I think they're all kind of in the same category. And me and David were talking about that before the show, just about free agency. The Chargers could be trying to roll more cap over into 2023 because they are in tight cap space because of the big deal signed to J.C. Jackson and taking on Khalil Max contract. But if they are going to do something, it would be likely after some other teams have to make some veteran cuts. Yeah, I mean, they have a little bit of space left over. I mean, you, you you mentioned the 14 million and hey, there's still some good players that get cut late. I mean, hello. Rem- remember Casey Hayward? You know, we just talked about him on our ultimate Chargers defense show that we put out yesterday. So there's plenty of examples of players that get cut late that, you know, they just might not fit on that roster, but that doesn't mean that they couldn't fit on the Chargers roster. So Mm. you want to keep that flexibility. You want to be able to make moves. But also, I think it is important to remember that they they are going to be in some cap hell next year. So, hey, you might want to be able to keep as much money as you can to be able to roll over so you can kind of soften the blow a little bit. 
Yeah, and I'm not even necessarily advocating for that. I mean, to me, go all in, right? There's so many oh, ways yeah. to restructure Definitely. contracts and stuff. Like, you can figure the rest of that stuff I mean, look at the later, Saints. Obviously. I mean, come on now. If you, if you think the, the salary cap is actually real, look at what the Saints have done the last couple of years. They do whatever the hell they want with the salary cap. It just, like, it doesn't even matter. For sure. But we have more questions to get into. So let's get to Jimmy Pham here. And we also had a similar question from Eden Natoli. And he asked, why don't we bring back Justin Jackson? And obviously, he's a guy that I think got in a lot of Chargers fans' nerves because of being unable to stay on the field. But the talent was obviously there. I mean, the dude averaged 5.4 yards per carry. So, David, why not bring back Justin Jackson with the uncertainty, I'd say, after Austin Eckler and Isaiah Spiller? Yeah, I mean, I think Justin Jackson is a guy that the Chargers will probably keep in close contact with just in case anybody gets into any kind of injuries. But that's been the issue with Justin Jackson is just you don't know if he's going to be on the football field. He's a guy that's missed 21 games in his career. He has never played a full season in his NFL career. So it's just, you you know, you know, the talent is there. You know that he can definitely move when he has the football but you just don't know if he's going to be available for you. I mean, I I would go the opposite way. I mean, I, I would have him in there right now because I would rather – like the difference is, is like you're not needing him to be the RB2 this year. Right. You need him to be RB3, right, because you have Isaiah Spiller now. If it was just Austin Eckler, Justin Jackson, and Larry Roundtree and Josh Kelly, I'm staying away from that situation. I wouldn't want to run yeah. that back at all, right? But – if you're telling me he's the third most important guy, and he also played 14 games last season, heck yes, I'm giving that a shot over just assuming that either one of these two undrafted free agents or Joshua Kelly and Larry Ramtree is going to make a big step because I don't think it, it's hard production-wise to argue that either Josh Kelly or Larry Ramtree could even hold the candle to what Justin yeah, Jackson's not. been able to do. I mean, he had a season where he averaged 6.9 yards per carry, right. he averaged 5.4 yards per carry last season. He's never averaged less than 4.1 yards per carry his rookie season. And all these other guys were averaging close to two yards per carry last season as far as the yeah. other guys in the mix right now. So I'm definitely an advocate for it. Even with the injuries, hey, he gets injured in training camp, you're right back where you started, right? Yeah. So, like, I don't see that being a ton of risk involved because I don't think you're, you're really investing too much in that. But we do have another question here from Stephen Gilliard before we wrap things up. And he asks, fourth and ten, Chargers defense is on the field. We get the stop to win. What 11 defenders do you want on the field, and how do you want them to be lined up? So, David, you give me your 11-man front and, you know, 11-man defense, and I'll give you mine. Sounds good. Yeah, so we're, we're going to go, obviously, J.C. Jackson on one side, Asante Samuel Jr. on the other. We're going to have Bryce Callahan in the slot there. I think that's where he uh, fits in best. You can have Darwin James and Nas in the backfield on uh, your split safety look there. And, uh, you know, you're going to have your two linebackers. It's going to be Drew Tranquil and Kyle Van Noy because I want to have the best linebackers on the football field. And that's why Kyle Van Noy is in the middle. And then you got Joey Bosa on one side, obviously Khalil Mack on the other side. And in the middle, you got Sebastian Joseph Day and Morgan Fox. That is my winning defense in that situation. I feel like I want my best pass rushers on the football field. I want my best cover defenders on the football field. So that's why I have those guys on the field on fourth and ten. Yeah, I mean, mine is similar but different. So I, I have the same corners. I mean, I have Bryce Callahan and slot. Michael Davis doesn't make the list for either of us. For safeties, I have Nazir Adderley and JT Woods on the back end right now. And uh, my linebackers are Derwin James and Drew Tranquil. So I'm going with a dime package. Sounds like you're going nickel in that situation. Yeah. You still have linebackers on the field. It's fourth and ten, right? So right. I'm going nickel or I'm going dime. You yeah. know, I have Derwin James playing the money position on the field for them Extra right at DB. that moment. And then, listen to this. My edge rushers, Khalil Mack and Kyle Van Noy, with Joey Bosa and Morgan Fox on the interior. Ah, I love little that. I love spin that. Spin on a little NASCAR package on the inside. I like right? it. Joey Bosa could play. I mean, defensive tackle. In my oh, mind he eats really guards for to lunch, too. Totally. It's a total mismatch. And right there, you know, you're not as afraid of the run at that point. Right. And Derwin James, I'll take a linebacker either way. Right. But right. that's yeah. who I would have out there. I mean, I think that's even though JT Woods, I mean, it's a little, you know, it's hard to put him on the field without seeing him play at this level. But right. my biggest concern would be him coming up and tackling in the running game, patrolling the back end and making plays on the football or things that he was, you know, one of the best safeties at last year and the entirety of college football. So. Give me that playmaker back there with Nazir Adderley. Keep Derwin James closer to the line of scrimmage to take away everything underneath or to just put in the slot if you have to against a fourth receiver, whatever you want to do. But that's the way I'm going to line it up. But 
We do have another segment because we have way more Fan Mail Friday questions to get to. So coming up next, we'll talk about if Tom Telesco will be on the hot seat if the Chargers don't make the playoffs in 2022. And we'll also talk about if Justin Herbert is more likely to win MVP or Derwin James is more likely to win Defensive Player of the Year. And my money would be on Justin Herbert. And he has some of the best odds you're going to find at betonline.net. That's where I place all of my bets, the official betting sponsor of the Locked On Chargers podcast. I love betonline.net because first thing, I love props. And they have a ton of props to choose from at BetOnline. And I always like to have fun, right? So I'm going weird stuff. And even though football is gone, betting makes all the other lesser sports even better. <clears throat> and with all those sports, I mean, baseball, right? Basketball and NHL are over now, but you still have baseball. You still have UFC. You can go with eSports. You can go with your favorite Vegas casino games at betonline.net. And they have the best lines and odds that you're going to find. They have the fastest payouts you were going to get. And they have everything that you're looking for and everything that you could want out of a betting place. So make some money with betonline.net. Head to the website. Darn COVID. Or use your mobile device today to find out the latest trends and the action at BetOnline, where the game starts. All right, we have a few more questions to get into. Probably too many more questions to get into because we had so many people come through and really respond. But let's start with the first one here from Alvin, David's best friend on Twitter. And he asks, should Telesco be fired if we don't make the playoffs this year? David, I leave it to you. Actually, Alvin, this is going to be one of the very few times that I am going to agree with you. I don't think there is any excuses after this year. I think the Chargers are well equi equipped to be able to kind of navigate through it this season and be able to play against any team that's on their on their schedule. I really think that they have the offense. They have now the defense, at least the pieces on defense. If they're able, if they're able to come together and find that chemistry on the defensive side, I think this is one of the most complete Chargers teams that we have ever seen assembled. And I think that they very well should make the playoffs. And if they don't, barring catastrophic injury, then yes, Tom Telesco very much should be on the hot seat. And honestly, he probably should lose his job because this is a roster that's ready to compete right now, Daniel, and they should. And, I mean, these are just valuable years of the primes of, you know, Keenan Allen, Justin Herbert, Mike Williams, all these dudes, right? All these young guys, like, this is their prime time to go get it done. This is your window is now. That's why it's tough, right? And I think... The problem is, is I think as much as Tom Telesco seems beloved by the front office and everything, right, I think that Brandon Staley is becoming that much more beloved. And I think that the problem is, is you get to the end of the season, you don't make the playoffs and you have so many good players in your roster. It's like, where do you keep pointing the finger? Yeah. Because we know that they're probably not going to get rid of Brandon Staley after two seasons. Tom Telesco's had nine years. Brandon Staley is only going into his second season. So it doesn't look good on either of them, but that's where I think the blame would lie if they have another really, really disappointing season. But let's get to the next one here from Red Dog 88 who asks, who are you looking forward to watching a training camp on offense or defense? I'm really looking forward to seeing Josh Palmer and Jalen Guyton to see how they are improving. David, we're going to have multiple shows on this at some point, but let's do a quickie here and just talk a little bit about some of these guys that we are very excited to see. Yeah, I mean, I think on offense, I'll give you one. It's Isaiah Spiller. I'm very, very excited to watch Isaiah Spiller and how he's going to fit in to this Chargers offense and this Chargers backfield. And I want to see if he's a guy that can truly be the guy to be the compliment back to Austin Eckler and to be able to take some of that off his plate and still be able to give you good production. And on defense, I'm looking for Asante Samuel Jr. to really have a resurgent year. After the injuries, I felt like he had a good rookie, you know, first rookie season at first. And then unfortunately suffered some of those concussions and then we just saw a different player. So I'm hoping to see a, a healthy and confident uh, Asante Samuel Jr. out there that's going to be in a defense surrounded by more talent than he's ever seen. And I think that's going to take some of that pressure off his plate with J.C. Jackson being the number one corner, being the unquestioned number one guy that's going to probably see most of the one number one options 
uh, from offenses that they're going to play this year. So I think that's going to take some pressure off of ASJ, and he's going to be able to go out there and play some very, very good football. Yeah, and David doesn't know how the rapid round works. <laughs> no, I, I like all those picks. I mean, Trey Pipkins I want to see, right, just because so much I think Definitely. is riding on his development. Josh Palmer's a great pick, too. See if he can take that next step. And, yeah, rookies, JT Woods, Isaiah Spiller, Zion Johnson. I want to, I'm want. i ready to see all those guys. And J.C. Jackson in a Chargers jersey for the first time. He's living up to the hype. Really excited to see a lot of guys this training camp. But let's go to Dylan Kirkpatrick, who asks, what's Dan doing for his bachelor party? Well, first, I'm hoping that this COVID goes away before my bachelor party so everything can go according to plan. But the problem is I don't know the plan because it's all been kept in a secret group chat, to, to, group chat totally away from me. So I wish, I mean, I think it's going to be fun things, but honestly, I have no idea what we're doing at this point. But let's go to Atir on Twitter who asks, Hi guys, I love you so much. I'm from Michigan. Every time I ask a question, I don't get an answer, but I'm going to last do this this last time. This is good. Would you play Buffalo at home for the AFC title game or the Patriots on the road? All right, David, that's a toughie. Where are you going with that? Actually, it's not tough at all for me. It's Buffalo <laughs> at home. I want no, nothing to do with the New England Patriots on the road in February when it's going to be probably pouring down snow and super cold. No, thank you. I'd much rather be in the climate controlled, beautiful SoFi stadium. Yeah. The funny thing though, is like not that the bills would be more scary on the road, but like the bills aren't even really a team that's set to play in Buffalo in that time of the year, right? If the weather conditions aren't great, but they also, you know, really took it to the Chiefs last year too and should have won that game in that overtime rules and all that kind of thing. But it's hard. I mean, I, I guess it's Buffalo just because, I mean, yeah, I don't think that the weather plays to what the Chargers' strengths are. They're trying to get more balance, so that's a thing, and that could help them in a situation like that. But Bill Belichick just knows how to play to that, right? And they had Mac Jones throw three passes in a game that they won against the Bills this season. So, like, They always seem to be the team that knows how to play to the strengths of what their stadium is. That being said, I would want to beat the Patriots more, obviously, because of all the heartbreak that's happened across the years. Let's get to the next question here. We have McKinley Pierce, who asks, more likely to happen, Justin Herbert MVP or Derwin James Defensive Player of the Year? What do you think, David? Yeah, I mean, as much as I'd love to see Derwin James win Defensive Player of the Year, I just don't think a safety is going to be able to have gaudy enough stats to be able to win that award. That usually goes to a pass rusher because of the sexy stack sack number, excuse me. On offense, I think Justin Herbert's prime to do that. Going into the second year of an offense with all of the incredible weapons around him and a great offensive line in front of him, I think he is primed to be able to possibly do that this year. Yeah, it's Justin Herbert for sure. And it is because, I mean, he's probably, Derwin isn't probably the most likely player on his team to win Defensive Player of the Year, right? I yeah. mean, you, you are probably going to be on a very good defense if you're winning the award, and that's usually who it goes to to some extent. But, yeah, I mean, a safety hasn't won it since Troy Palomalo in 2010. I mean, before that, there was a couple guys, right? Bob Sanders won one. Uh, Ed Reed won one. But it's just been a while, and it's a lot different what people kind of are valuing in this age of the NFL, but we all know how important safeties are. We all know important Derwin James is, but it's much more likely to be Justin Herbert because we saw the dude borderline put up MVP numbers as recently as last season. So yeah, he can definitely do it, but there's a lot of good competition that's in the way as well. But let's get to this last one here from Lust Drace who asks, what are your thoughts on Chris Rumpf being a dark horse candidate to break out in 2022? So David, I think Chris Rumpf's, picture got a little bit more blurry with the addition of Kyle Van Noy because he is you know who we think is going to be the main third pass rusher but I think we know that with Chris Rump it was going to be a lot of time in the weight room and there were some definite things that he could improve on in the offseason to earn himself a bigger role in this season yeah and it's all about putting on some good size to be able to stay and stand up against the run and not be able not have to be taken off the football field and for him to be able to finish like even in college when he was rushing he's very slippery like he he can get to the quarterback a lot of the times but we didn't see him finish the play and I think that's what's next for Chris Rump is being able to stay on the field against the run and finishing uh and getting after the quarterback and getting the quarterback on the ground yeah, I mean, being bigger is definitely going to help because he's not yes. just a guy that can just easily get thrown out of the way because 
what was it, right? Last year, Joey Bosa called him string bean and said yeah. this year is more like asparagus, right? So <laughs> he's moving up. But I think it's just how many snaps do you need to have a breakout season, right? Yeah. Like, if you're telling me his breakout season is going to be like four and a half, five and a half sacks, I mean, I think that's something that's doable because I yeah. think there's going to be so much attention placed other places when he's <laughs> out there. But yeah, I do think that the Chargers do like to keep their guys fresh. And I do think, you know, he's going to get some run on the field and a chance to earn himself a bigger role, at least as far as the next guy going on and maybe makes them feel better about using KVN as a linebacker more in that position, right? Because we know he can do a little bit of both. And we know the Chargers need him more at linebacker than they do at edge rusher. But I like Chris Rump. I liked him coming out. I mean, David's favorite word with him is slippery. He is a slippery mm-hmm. guy. And he has definite pass rush chops. And yeah. I think he also came along as a special teams player last year. And I think that's going to be really important in the coach's eyes this year, being that good special teams player too. But let's get to Donnie's question, David. I know we're going a little long, but he asked who we think is going to have more receiving yards in 2022. Last year it was Mike Williams. Every other year it's been Keenan Allen. Who do you think it is in 2022? Yeah, I mean, I, I love Keenan Allen. I, I really do. And I think if you ask me who is going to have more catches, I, I still I'm going to go with Keenan Allen. But I, I think it's going to be Mike Williams again. I just think wow. with him being the X receiver, he's going to be put in position to be able to make a lot of big plays. And that's going to turn into a lot of yards. So I think it's it's Mike Williams. Yeah, oof. it's a toughie. I mean, it's tougher than I thought it would be. I'm really going to go with Keenan Allen just because, I mean, 10 drops last year led the team. Obviously, he catches one of those with his yards per catch average. He literally gets more receiving yards last year than Mike Williams. That's how close that they were in 2021. But I just think that with Mike Williams, I mean, his production is a little bit more up and down, obviously, historically, so you don't know. Yeah, Keenan Allen is also the one – which is crazy after the way he started his career, right, to be on the field. And it's had a much better track record. And Mike Williams has been on the field a lot. He's not injury prone by any means. He's played through a lot. But he's also had to play through a lot where, yeah. you know, he's having three game stretches of only two catches in each of those games. So I'm going to go with old reliable on this one. I'm going to go with Keenan Allen. I think he retakes the receiving yards crown. And I think that Mike Williams will obviously lead in other things like receiving touchdowns and big plays made down the field and 20 and 40 plus yard catches. But I think Keenan Allen comes back and gets at least one more season of leading the team. I'd love to see it in receiving yards. Yeah. I mean, he definitely can do it. Like Keenan Allen is still one of the hardest dudes in the NFL to press and one of the hardest dudes in the NFL to cover one-on-one. And it's just, you know, as he said, they call it third and me third and Keenan Allen <laughs> third right? and Keenan baby fourth and Staley but it's third and Keenan Allen that's right. for sure but <laughs> that's gonna wrap things up for today's show thank you guys so much for bearing with me as I push through COVID and keep pushing out content Appreciate for you, you guys of course I mean I just I'm sorry to bet online for coughing right in the middle of their ad read but thank you guys again to make sure you're never missing the show go subscribe to the Lockdown Chargers YouTube channel and also follow the show for free on all platforms wherever you get your podcast from follow me on Twitter at Dan Talk Sports and David Drogmeyer on Twitter at Drotalk SD and his DMs are always open. You guys can also call into the voicemail line. We didn't have any this week, but the number is 323-524-7924 to get your voicemails on the show. Thank you guys so much for making us your first listen. If you guys need a second listen, make sure to go follow the Locked On NFL podcast. It has the best experts from around the NFL and the Locked On Podcast Network bringing you everything up to date from around the league. And that's what I used to keep up with all the rest of the teams because I'm so singularly focused on the Chargers, but make sure you're also most importantly following us everywhere and following me me on Twitter again at Dan Talk Sports. We don't have to give David Drogmeyer's Twitter handle again, but you can also find us on our at Locked On Chargers Instagram page and our at or and our Locked On Chargers Facebook page as well. We will be back with you guys one more week of three shows a week and then we are moving back into five shows a week after that. I'm also getting married soon, so things might get mushed around a little bit, but we will be back with you guys on Monday. Until then, take it easy. And go bolts.